That was a really unsatisfying click. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Morning Bible. It's wonderful to have you. Um, Luke, that's where we're at. Luke, still, chapter 18 today. Um, it's a short little passage, but hopefully um, one that will sort of challenge you as much as it's challenged me in the past and continues to challenge me. Um, we are going to go from verse 15 through to verse 17, so let's just have a quick read. Um, now they were bringing even infants to him, that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child, shall not enter it. So, to sort of our modern understanding, that doesn't seem super radical, right? That doesn't seem too crazy. It's like, yeah, Jesus was happy for kids to come along and listen to him teach, and he was happy to sort of spend time with them and that kind of thing. That's that's fairly normal, right? Um, at the time, no, absolutely not. Um, because uh, society looked very differently um, in this period and in this part of the world, uh, children typically weren't seen as that valuable until they actually provided for the household. Um, because times would be tougher for people, they would struggle to sort of um, be putting enough food on the table, they'd be working the land quite a lot, and so a child would just be another mouth to feed without actually providing anything for them, necessarily. Um, and so, even though obviously children provide love and happiness and all the rest of it, they wouldn't provide any practical food or workforce, really. Um, and so, they weren't, they were, you know, children were still loved and still raised and cared for and all the rest of it. Um, but they weren't holding a very high social standing because they didn't contribute very much. Um, <clears throat> and so, when these children tried to come and see Jesus, um, his disciples try and keep the kids away. They're like, no, 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 he's talking to the adults, right? Grown-ups are talking over here. You, you go home. You go back to your parents or whatever. But Jesus says, no, 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 bring them over here. I want the children here. I want all of the children to be here right in the middle with me. Um, don't separate them from me. And so what does he say specifically? He says, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. So Jesus is telling his disciples off um, for getting in the way of these children coming to him. Uh, this is something that we see uh, repeated a few times in some of the letters that come after um, Jesus' time, where people say, um, Paul says especially, it's a big problem when you hinder your brother from doing something. If you get in the way of someone else's faith, if you hold someone back from encountering Jesus, from having this experience, um, then you're doing something really wrong. And so Jesus is telling them off a bit for hindering the kids. Um, he says, let them come to me, do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Um, so my Bible has quite an interesting note on this. It says, uh, for to such belongs does not mean children automatically belong to the kingdom, but that the kingdom belongs to such. So that's essentially what it's saying. It's saying, to such belongs the kingdom of God. It isn't saying, every kid, you know, owns the kingdom of God. It's saying, people who are like kids have the kingdom of God. Um, to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. So what does that actually mean, right? The idea that um, to such belongs the kingdom of God and that, um, yeah, you need to receive the kingdom of God like a child. What does that actually mean? Um, well, it's talking about this idea of childlike faith. Um, and so childlike faith is something that I've really struggled with <laughs> um, throughout sort of my life. Because to me, for, a, for the longest time, childlike faith meant gullibility, right? It meant, oh, if you believe things like a child, then that means you just fall for anything people tell you. That means you're not skeptical, you're not cynical, you don't ask questions, you just believe because someone's told you. Um, you just kind of go all in without actually doing any of the research. Um, and so I had a real issue with this call for sort of childlike faith. I was like, no, I don't want my faith to be childlike. I want to know, you know, I want to have all this evidence. I want to have all these fancy arguments, all these um, well-constructed things to prove uh, my faith to people, to say that, no, no, I'm not, I'm not like a child. I'm not like a gullible sort of child who's just following along happily um, with this faith thing. I want to be able to prove to people that I actually know what I'm talking about and I'm actually very clever. Um, and 
hopefully you'll realise that that's actually a really wrong backwards way of thinking about this. We looked just yesterday at the parable, not, uh, yeah, it is a parable, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, where there's the Pharisee who's standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes, I, you know, this, this is a tax collector who's like, oh, I'm so good. And I think this was one of my big, big problems with accepting this idea of childlike faith, was I was there like, no, I need to be, you know, clever. I need to be uh, well-spoken, I need to be articulate, I need to have a good argument to prove myself to people. Um, and that isn't necessarily a bad thing, those things on their own aren't a bad thing, but striving for to have those things and treasuring those things above having a childlike faith is a real issue. I think where I had a turning point with addressing this childlike faith was actually during my time at uni, where I got to meet a handful of people who do have childlike faith, um, which initially to me was quite a shock, because I was like, what do you mean you just believe it all? <laughs> like, I was like, they were like, don't you believe it all? I was like, well yeah, I do, but you just, you just go for it, you just run with things. And that was when I realised what childlike faith actually meant. Um, isn't sort of this gullibility, isn't sort of this, this, oh, just believe anything that anyone throws out there. It's this idea that you look at scripture and you just know it to be true and you just take it and you run with it. Um, you don't sort of hesitate, you don't come up with excuses, you don't try to sort of second guess everything in it and try and come up with the, you know, all these contextual arguments for how this thing works and why this thing is said like this and why this rule is a thing and why this passage could be metaphorical or literal. You don't do any of that, you don't worry yourself with all those things, you just look at the Bible and says, this is the word of God and I'm going to take the word of God and I'm going to run with what it says. Um, and that's what Jesus is calling people to do. It's this childlike faith of just acceptance. Um, you need to trust. You need to just have this huge, huge trust. And that was my problem before, was I was, I had trust to a degree. I was like, yeah, yeah, God's probably real and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, I really, I'll never properly know until I go to heaven. I can never prove it. Um, and there are certain things in the Bible where I'm not so sure about them and so I'm just going to kind of put them over here and deal with them later, but it's like, that's not childlike. Childlike faith is saying, alright, I'm in. I'm fully in. God, you can, you can do what you want with me. You have my entire being. I'm entirely yours. Just like a child is to their parent, you know. A child relies entirely on their parent to provide for them, to drive them to places, to feed them, to wash them, to put them to bed at the right time, to wake them up in the morning at the right time, to do everything, to put their shoes on as they're leaving the house. A child relies on their parent for all of these things. And so a childlike faith looks like having God as part of all of those things as well. Being first thing you wake up in the morning, it's like, all right, God, help me wake up. And then when you're going downstairs, like, all right, God, what's the plan today? What do you want from me? And then when you're putting your shoes on, alright God, where are you taking me? What can I be doing here? It's this constant thing of having God in every part of you and relying on God entirely. That's what childlike faith is. And that's what Jesus is encouraging his disciples to do. He's encouraging, encouraging them to look to the children who are coming through, who are coming through this crowd and saying, look, you need to be like them. You shouldn't be stood around blocking people out, hindering people from coming to me, um, coming up with all these reasons, all these excuses. Um, trying to second guess everything, trying to make everything the way that you expect it to be. You should come to me as children and take the things I say, take them to heart and go out and excitedly do them and rely on me in everything. Um, so yeah, it's such a good passage, such a good little challenge. It's, it's still something that I struggle with, you know, it's still something that I'm sort of growing in and all the rest of it. But it's so, yeah, it's so good, it's so encouraging. And it's one of those things where it, when you come across someone with a childlike faith and you don't have one and you properly spend time with that person you realise how biblically grounded they are and how much knowledge they have and how much trust they have in scripture um, it makes you realise that actually in your quest for sort of being knowledgeable and intelligent and all the rest of it you completely missed the point and you don't know anything about scripture in comparison to this person <laughs> um, which is which is something that I'm I'm growing in um, but yeah thank you very much for watching uh, hopefully you got something from that sorry there wasn't very much passage there was a lot more me talking today um, but 
that was sort of where I felt this video was supposed to go. So yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye-bye.